Hey, first time trying to make something informational like this, but uh, I've been working on something for the last two weeks now, and I want to make a little tutorial on it. Uh, now, this situation can vary from PC to PC, and there are a lot of factors involved, so I have tried my best to make this as simple and as easy as possible without sending people on scavenger hunts through their bios or registry edits and that type of thing. Starting off, I have a comparison of benchmarks. Here is a benchmark of default settings with Genesis or Kane, a skin that for me has had a lot of performance issues. Um, and you can see during certain moves and animations, you can see the frame rate spike down to 114 at its lowest um, and inconsistent frame times. Now, this is also on Hodojo against Loxodon, another character with these same issues. Now, I do also want to say, uh, during my testing, I noticed that Hodojo is the stage that's definitely the best for testing this problem due to a lot of performance issues I've had with Hodojo in the past, especially with like Wi-Fi doubles and that type of thing. So you'll see with these tweaks um, in the top right, it's been a consistent 120 pretty much the entire time, which is just something that I could never get beforehand without these. Um, and, you know, obviously I encourage you to test yourself before deciding, but I genuinely believe that this will help a lot of people's issues with performance and overall consistency. I've done a bunch of other stuff to help with this uh, due to AMD limitations and it's a lot of latency tweaks so I have a link in a guide below in the description because I've seen some improvements from that as well uh, but I would always test these first before going through that guide. We're going to start off with something easy here. First, you're going to want to go to Steam, right click on Rivals 2 and go to Properties. And at the bottom, you should see Launch Options. I'll have these in the description as well, but put these launch options into the field. Now, DX12 is one to be cautious with because this one is dependent on your graphics card. This is important, uh, depending on the age of the card, you may see an increase in performance from DX11. A simple way you can test this is by searching either the specs of your graphics card or typing DX Diag into the window search bar and at the bottom it'll list your DirectX version. I advise you to test both of these before deciding. Next we have high and use all available cores. This is also very dependent on your hardware. In my PC I have a Ryzen 5 5950X, a very very overkill CPU for Rivals 2, but these launch options take advantage of the specs of that CPU. As long as it's somewhat modern, this should improve performance, but you can leave this one out if you notice a significant decrease in consistency. Finally, and I cannot stress this one enough, disable your Steam overlay. Um, and all overlays for that matter, whether it's Discord, GeForce Experience, or Adrenaline software, and monitoring software such as MSI Afterburner, these can cause inconsistencies and drops, especially in games using Unreal Engine 5. I'd recommend disabling as many as you can. Uh, Steven even gave us the option to disable the overlay on a game-by-game -game basis recently, so I'd recommend disabling that until you need to buy something from the shop. You can use lobby codes and that type of stuff if you want to use the lobby system. Little editor's note, god damn. This is the biggest difference maker. In the description, I have a Google Drive link to download my game user settings and engine files if you'd like to just drag and drop them, but I highly, highly recommend copy pasting the scalability groups and texture streaming script directly into the game user settings with Notepad, so you don't mess with full screen, audio settings, or that sort of thing. This is also where I would like to credit Clementine. Um, she is the person that helped me with these scripts and the other Unreal Engine 5 tweaks that I was not familiar with. With, and I would like to highlight the three big aspects that we found. With First off, in scalability groups, I want to highlight that setting the in-game settings to low will definitely help with the performance. Uh, this is where a lot of those settings will end up. Um, but in this INF file, there are actually some values that we can mess with that will help save some system resources. Normally, setting these to low will set everything to zero, except global illumination quality and the four quality settings below texture quality. These are by default locked at 3. Adjusting these to 1 has actually shown difference in my benchmarks with very little quality change. And I also wanted to show that here, um, you can see that the difference is almost non-existent outside of some texture differences, minor texture differences in the stage in the background, uh, which is pretty difficult to notice while playing. It also just helped with overall performance and rendering visual effects and that type of thing. 
Now I want to highlight the biggest changes. These definitely have the most impact on your performance overall. Um, so I'd pay attention to this one if anything. But on screen is the texture streaming script that Clementine found. Now I'm not going to act like I know the exact logistics behind this script, but from my testing it significantly improves issues with spiking frame rates on certain visual effects. Uh, for example, Locke's Meatball, Orcane Full Speed Fair, Force Burn Smoke, or pretty much any massive visual effect that takes up a lot of the screen. Um, this is one of my big gripes with performance because depending on if you have rendered the shaders or not, every time these visual effects are rendered for the first time, it will cause a significant frame rate spike due to the minimum streaming pool filling and refreshing. This script sets it to unlimited so the game has the resources needed to keep it filling smooth. Finally, we have the engine.ini file. This one is especially important. The render target pool minimum script goes hand in hand with the texture streaming one that we put in earlier. Uh, it raises the minimum pool from 400 at low settings to 4096. Now I've extensively tested this value at 4096, 2048, and 1024, and I would recommend testing all three of them to see. Um, just like previously though, most modern hardware should be able to handle 2000 2048 plus and it's up to your testing to decide. And the last script in this file basically compiles shaders every time you launch the game. Think Marvel Rivals or any modern title with Unreal Engine 5. This will override and render every texture, shader, effect, anything like that on the launch of the game, significantly improving performance after updates or hotfixes. Uh, currently, without this, every time the game patches, you have to re-render these shaders, and this is a huge issue for a lot of people when coming back to the game after patches. Once again, this was a huge fun and uh, thank you Clementine. And yeah, these are the final tweaks that we came to a conclusion on. I've been testing these pretty extensively for the last week or two, and I've been consistently sending log files and that type of thing to Clementine, just proving that things like the render target minimum are being adjusted and that these aren't just placebo. I will note uh, that some of these will significantly improve performance with AMD GPUs slash CPUs. When it comes to Nvidia though, I had a couple people test and they also saw some significant improvements as well. So I'd recommend trying it and coming back to the video if something feels wrong. Um, now the easiest way to disable all of these is simply deleting your game user settings file and engine file, and the game will create a new one on the next time you boot. Um, but these settings overall haven't improved so many pain points that I have with the optimization, and I hope they help you or your local stream PC that's dropping 45 frames during every ledge dash. As a reminder, I'll have the launch options slash config files in the description for copy-paste or download if you need. Thank you.